So uh, I'm pleased to announce that from the Rick County School District, Dr. Steve Shelton. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Dr. Markley, our superintendent, sends his regrets. Um, he's, uh, he's really suffering down in southern Florida. <laughs> he, he called me this morning about 8 o'clock his time, 7 o'clock our time. First of all, I wonder why he called me. So, uh, good morning. Uh, he says, hey, you know what I'm doing? I said, well, why? What are you doing? Well, I'm walking down the sidewalk and it's 79 degrees. Yeah. Oh, oh, it really strikes out. I'm, it might it's gonna make me sweat, but I'm not careful. So, exactly. Exactly. So, so well, enjoy your time. But he does send his regrets. Uh, he truly loves our school district and, and the students that we serve and the staff that we support. Uh, and he also is passionate about the democratic process and the voice of the people and going uh, and going to Jeff City and other places and representing our district in that capacity that now doing the job in that capacity. Um, as Richard said, I'm Steve Shelton. I'm the assistant superintendent of secondary education. Uh, I oversee the high schools and middle schools, Herman Career Center, uh, athletic activities, those type of things, also administrative services like residency. I've been around the last three or four years where we talk about residency. We have a very uh, thorough residency process. So those are the things I oversee, and I work on a team of about oh, 8 to 10 people with other assistant students and assistant superintendents under Dr. Marcus Lee, and under the uh, lead of our Board of Education, Mr. Barnes is part of, so he does an outstanding job as well. Um, when asked to come speak, you know, like the question was, well, what, what would you like to hear about? Uh, and so there are a couple of things that we're going to definitely talk about. One is the, the whole TIF issue that's been in the news quite a bit here recently and kind of, kind of come now to uh, full circle completion, at least the one TIF, and I'm going to talk about some other TIFs that are out there that still are being discussed. Uh, also, uh, on the list of things to talk about tonight is the Kansas City Missouri School District. And I'll throw maybe even the Hickman Mill School District in that as well. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about those things. And I have some other items that I know, I think I was told about maybe 15, 20 minutes or something. So we'll get to that point. I brought more than that to talk about, but uh, when we get to that 15, 20 minute time period, we'll be done. I'm going to, I want to provide you an email that Dr. Markley uh, provided the school district here recently in regards to the TIF. And if you don't mind passing, I'll just take one pass on. This is regards to the Winchester TIF. Um, and feel free to read this. A lot of information that um, you will, that needs to be shared can be found within the context of this email. A few months ago, we became aware that the Kansas City, Missouri, the city of Kansas City, Missouri was going to take some money that uh, rightfully belonged to our community and our school district and use it outside of our school district. So, Dr. Mark and Mr. Blankenship, our Associate Superintendent for Finance and Operations, they went to bat. They attended TIF meetings, they had meetings with uh, Councilman and, and Mayor Sly James. They've also met with state legislators, uh, leaders here in the Raytown uh, community as well, and said, you know what, this isn't right. This money, this TIF that we all agreed upon sometime in the past, those funds should be spent on something that benefits our district and specifically benefits our students. And so through quite a bit of dialogue and quite a bit of discussion, uh, they finally have come to terms. Now, I will, uh, I, not only were we able to, uh, through Dr. Markley's leadership and Mr. Blankenship's leadership, secure the funds that belong to the school district, but there are other players in this game. There are other taxing entities that are affected by it. Excuse me. Things like you know, libraries, the community over in that school park area that had money that was coming to them. There were a lot of people that were going to get money taken from them in this process. And, be, and it was going to be spent, once again, outside of our school district. Well, Dr. Marklet, and as well as others, went to bat, went to the negotiation process. And in the end, not only did Dr. was Dr. Markley able to secure the funds that were due to our district, 
but also secure the funds that were due to those other taxing entities as well as those residents that had some improvements to their community comment. And so this email kind of outlines that. The core, the core of the negotiation that greatly benefits our school district is about a three and a half, four million dollar payoff to the district. And I say, I mean payoff money that was due us, that was owed to us. We'll take that three, three and a half, four million dollars, we'll put that into our, into our school system and we'll use it probably for improvements. Typically since it's one time money, it's not recurring money. We won't put that into a salary schedule, typically. We won't put that in something that's recurring cost. But we'll take those monies and maybe it's time for improvements in some of our buildings. Roofs, uh, HVAC, uh, maybe technology, computer infrastructure, some of those things. It was one-time cost where we won't have to say we need to depend on this money all the time. The long-term benefit of this, ne this negotiated agreement is that we will have a recurring roughly about a $1 million revenue source that we didn't have before. Per so, annum. Pardon me? Per annum? Per year. Per year. We will, from, the, from, from that tip being closed, we'll have an, we will have an additional $1 million every year coming into our budget from the property tax from that area now, where that area wasn't, where that area was not being taxed. Now that, that property tax will come into our jurisdiction, into our coffers as well, as well as those libraries and other tax entities that were affected by that too. So, uh, short term, about a four million dollar payoff that we can use to help improve facilities or other one-time payments that, that hasn't been determined yet. Long term, about a million dollars of additional revenue every year. That's the type of money though that we would possibly put into. Uh, our salary schedules to help recruit and retain quality teachers, quality administrators in our district, and provide the very best education possible to all of each and every one of our students. So, that's a little bit about the Winchester tip. And once again, a lot of that information you can see, see right here. But there are some other tips out there uh, that are on the table that need to be discussed. One of, one of which is the Blue Ridge tip up, up at the Walmart, Sterling and Blue Ridge. Uh, where the new Walmart is, that is in our school district. Even though that's an independence address, I think it's an independence address. Uh, that is in our school district, and that property is under a tip. Also across the street where the, used, where the Blue Ridge Cinema used to be, it's now a parking lot, there's, discuss, there's a discussion now about uh, a tip going into that area as well. Uh, and so, you know, we want, we want to be good partners with developers and with cities and with the county to make sure that you know we are uh, being beneficial to them. You know, if it, there are times that a TIF works, and there are times that TIFs stop working or don't work at all, and we want to have that discussion discussion at the TIF meetings to say, this is how we see this benefiting the greater good, and this is how we see it benefiting our school. And so those are up right now for discussion. The TIF up at Blue Ridge where the mall is, and then the TIF where the cinema is. Uh, used to be, and what's going to happen possibly there. So, be kind of looking, paying attention to some some of this talk. If you have some, uh, some, if you would like some more information about that, please contact uh, Mr. Blankenship, our Associate Superintendent uh, uh, Finance and Operations. He can provide some more information as well as talking about uh, The second item that I was asked to talk about tonight was Kansas City, Missouri School District. It's been a topic that really hasn't been uh, in the forefront here recently. About a year ago, it was great in the forefront. Um, since that time, though, there was a court case. Five school districts uh, went to court on this side of the state. Three of those school, three of those school districts were found to be, um, uh, I guess, off hands by the Kansas City Missouri School District. Two of those districts, though, were, were determined that we would we would uh, not, I guess, experience a financial hardship by accepting Kansas City, Kansas City Missouri School Districts. Raytown and Blue Springs were those two school districts. On the east side of the state, you may have heard of uh, a similar court case um, where there were students from the St. Louis School District going into the Clayton School District. And there was a court case there as well, very similar in nature. And, and the, the Clayton School District was saying, this is a financial burden to us. There's no tax money coming our way. The St. Louis School District has not been paying us tuition. The tuition that they want to pay us isn't nearly enough. It's pretty much the same scenario that we were faced with. Kansas City, Missouri was saying, we're going to pay you $3,500. We're saying it costs $13,000 to uh, 
educated child in our school district, and that's where the discrepancy came, and that's the reason we went forward. Now, on the east side of the state, uh, the Clayton School District won that case. And so the, the St. Louis School District in the state who was uh, brought, who brought that to trial is appealing that to the state Supreme Court. Uh, the five school districts that were in this court case on this side of the state, us in Blue Springs, we're, we're, we are appealing that decision to the state Supreme Court, as well as the, the three school districts that uh, were determined not to, that, that would be a financial burden to. The state is, to, is appealing that to the Supreme Court. We think that we're going to wrap, they're gonna, the state Supreme Court is going to wrap both of those cases into one case. And they're going to, they're going to make judgment on that one case on how the state needs to handle unaccredited school districts and then the surrounding school districts. And so we're still waiting. Right now, it's in limbo. Right now, we have board policy that states, yes, we will, because we are obligated by state law and we are, we are obligated by the decision of the court to take students from unaccredited school districts. But we do have board policy that says, yes, we will take you, but you must, we, you must pay full tuition up front. And you must provide you must provide transportation, and we determine what that tuition cost is. To date, not one Kansas Missouri school district student has um, uh, applied for admission into our district. And if they were, um, we would build the Kansas Missouri school district. And uh, our experience tells us they would not pay that full tuition up front. So, right now, it's it's an issue, but it's an issue that's on the back burner. Now, I would say this, I mentioned Hickman Mill School District, they're to our south, they are provisionally accredited, and with the new accreditation system, they may or may not be accredited in the future. And so, uh, that may be an issue that we'll need to work on with, with Hickman Mill School District as well. So, any questions about the TIF? Any questions? Yes, back. Does this make the Winchester TIF a successful TIF for the school district? Or? This tip, the, the Winchester tip will be closed, and so that tip won't exist anymore. All in all, knowing how it finally ended up. Oh, I would say yes. I, I would, okay. you know, at this point, yes, because there were there were significant improvements. Very much so. Yeah. So. Significant improvements to that area. I would I would assume that the residents in that area who are going to experience some great improvements to the sewer system and as well as sidewalk and curbing are going to appreciate that. In regards to us, um, I'm going to venture to say the tax revenue from that area before now, probably wasn't going to be a million dollars. And so the improvements that were made, however long ago, that were put in that TIF, and those tax funds weren't uh, realized by us, but now they are going to be realized, or probably more than what we would have experienced if that TIF hadn't been in place. And what is with the Blue Ridge Ball? Why are you not, well, why are they not paying it? Well, and that's, you know, it's an it, argument to what's your side and why they're not paying it. Yeah, I, you know what, I, I can't really tell you the, what that, what that rationale may be. I, I think if, it's, it's, not a, it's not a question of uh, if, it's the when. And we're saying the when is now. And they're saying the when is later. And so, is this Independence or Kansas City in this case? Uh, I believe it's more Casey. Yeah. But once again, Mr. Blankenship can give you great, much greater detail than, than I can give. That makes sense. Yes. Do any of our schools have swimming pools? No. We, this is a way that the money could be spent. That, that's true. We could. We. Uh, well, no. We. That's true. We could build a swimming pool or two, uh, but we do have a very, very strong relationship with the YMCA, and we have, as a matter of fact, our both boys and girls swimming teams at both high schools. Uh, so we have two girl teams, two boys teams, are very strong, very competitive, very successful. And they go to the Y and they practice. And when we host meets, they go to the Y and we host the meets there. And we have a very good working relationship with, with the YMCA. Uh, right now, it works. And, and to build and maintain a pool uh, can be very expensive. And then, we get some money. Exactly. And then also, there's some liability involved with that as well um, that um, sometimes comes into comes into play. So, okay. Any other questions about the tip, or maybe Kansas City, Missouri? <coughs> did, did you say that your enrollment is up though for Kansas City students? Now? You know, um, you know, are you talking about students that are, are, yeah, are truly, truly seeing people move into the district because of this? 
we are seeing people, we, we have about a 14 to 50% transient rate. And what that means is about 14% of our district leaves every year, and about 14% uh, of new students come into our district. And so, where are those 14% coming from? And, it, and really, there's a lot of back and forth. So we might have five students who leave our district and go to the Kansas City Service School District. And we might have five that move back in. But the transient, the, the transient nature of our, of our population is between Kansas City, Missouri, Hickman Mills, uh, Grandview, Independence, Lee Summit, our surrounding. Uh, we'll get some from the Kansas side. Um, and we'll get some from the rest of Missouri. Um, so, I, because of location, true, it, it is true, we, we get, uh, of our transit students, we get those who move from Kansas City, Hickman, Independence, Lee Summit, Grandview, just because we're close to them. And, we're, and a lot of our students have moved, moved there. You know, they'll rent a duplex here, and then they'll maybe rent a duplex over in Is it rolling up? Overall district enrollment? Yes. Yes, we are up this year. Up quite a bit? Uh, I would say we're up by about 100 students so far. Yeah. Yeah, and we have a, a ten year um, ten year enrollment that's pretty stable to down. You know, we'll kind of go up and go down, but overall, if you look at our ten year trend, we're probably going to lose maybe ten to fifty kids a year, and then we'll go up, and then we'll lose ten or fifty, kind of go up. So we we'll, we hover right around eighty five hundred all the time. The district at its largest was around 17 or 18,000 back in the 70s and 80s. Any other questions about the TIF or any other questions about Kansas City, Missouri? Talking about Kansas City, Missouri makes me think about accreditation. One thing that Mr. Barnes and I talked about presenting tonight was about MSIP 5. If I said MSIP 5, would that uh, ring a bell for anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Missouri has an accreditation process. Uh, we, the, the Raytown School District has been fully accredited for years. Has never been anything but fully accredited. Um, never been a provisionally accredited. Never have we been unaccredited. We've always been fully accredited. Now the state term has, over the last 25 years, they have had many systems to determine accreditation. The MSIP one was the first one, and then every five years, it's changed, so it's been about 20 to 25 years. We are beginning what's called MSIP 5. In MSIP 4, you could earn up to 14 points. So if you got 14 points, you had all the points possible. And if you had between 9 and 14, you were fully accredited. If you had between, I'm going to say, 6, 7, or 8, you were provisionally accredited. And I want to say if you had one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, you were unaccredited. Okay? We've always been fully accredited. And sometimes we've had 14, and sometimes we've had 12, and sometimes we've had 11, and, but we've always been fully accredited. Okay? So, we're starting a new form of accreditation system. It's called MSIP 5. There are 140 points possible. All right? So it's a, it's, it's a lot different. There are 14 categories in MSIP 4, and so you got one point for each category. There are five points, there are five categories in MSIP 5. Student achievement, subgroup achievement, attendance, college and career readiness, graduation rate. Okay? And you get certain points within each of those five areas. So let me just share this with you if you don't mind. This, this is a preliminary draft document. Okay? And so... They're still crunching the numbers. They're still pushing out different models, and um, it's always being tweaked. But it's, it's been tweaked enough times now. It's not going to be tweaked much more. Than you should. There you go. Still lose points for student scores and non-core curriculum like physics. 
there. Well, let me answer this question. Yeah, yes and no. Directly, no. There's no, <coughs> there's not a state assessment for physics. Okay. But students who take physics typically do pretty do well on the ACT. The ACT though is representative. Okay. Gotcha. So if you if you take a look at this graph model, and if you would just if you would stay on page one here, there are, there are, as I said, 140 points possible. Currently we have 109 and a half of the 140 points, which is 78 uh, percent. If you have a 70 percent or higher, you're fully accredited. All right. Um, there are five areas: academic achievement, subgroup achievement, college and career readiness, attendance, and graduation rate. And of the points possible in academic achievement, we received 51 of the 56. Subgroup achievement, 8.5 of the 14. College and career readiness, 19.5 of the 30. Uh, and attendance, 8 of the 10. And in graduation rate, 22.5 out of the 30 points possible. Um, and you can see, they kind of give you a nice bar graph there of what percentage of the points those are. Now, if you flip the page, you can see a little bit, you can drill down a little deeper. So that's like a, I'll say, maybe a 10,000 foot view. If you go down to the 5,000 foot view here, you can see that within academic achievement, remember that, that uh, area where we had 51 of the 56 points, within that, you see English language arts, mathematics, science, social studies, 16 out of 16, 15 out of 16, 12 out of 16, and 8 out of 8. Then if you go to subgroup achievement, Three out of four, three out of four, one out of four, one and a half out of two. Explain subgroup. Subgroup, all right. If I said no child left behind, we would all probably recognize that term. Oh, right. like yeah, <laughs> so so when no child left behind came along, not only was was the overall good uh, looked at, the overall performance, but also subgroups underneath that. And so, if we, if we tested everybody in this room, um, we, we come up with a class average of, let's say, 95% on a test. But if we look at subgroup achievement, look at, well, how did the guys in the suit score? Well, everybody that wore a suit that day, you'd see my score, and maybe I got 75%. And then, you know, we look at everyone with glasses on. So how did everybody do with the glasses on? So you look at the subgroup achievement, you know, at each group. Within this model, ethnicity, SPED, free and reduced lunch, English language learners. So each, uh, any student that has one of those, uh, is in one of those groups. If you are a minority student, or if you're a free and reduced student, or if you're an English, English language learner, or if uh, you're a SPED student, you would be represented in this group. So it's important that we not only look at the, the global achievement, but also we look at the achievement of all subgroups as well. All right, college and career readiness. You can see within um, those categories, and it doesn't map it out here, but one, one to three is ACT scores, SAT scores, Compass Assessment, ASVAB, which is the military test. That, those scores are in that group. Uh, number four is college placement and number five and six uh, something like what five and six is but though all those indicators tell us if our students are ready for college and or career oh, I know what it is uh, technical skills attainment the Hermit Career Center or in our schools when a kid takes a business class or a foods class and they want to go in and be a culinary arts major or they want to be a welder or they want to be an auto mechanic they take a test and those scores are in there as well. Not, I believe that's five and six. So, all those indicators that say, you know what? You have demonstrated the skill and capacity to be successful in college and or your career choice. And then you can see attendance, and then you can see graduation. Attendance is exactly that. Coming to school, what, what they want to see, what they feel like is exceptional, is 90% of our students attending 90% of the time. That's what they say exceeds the standard. So 90% at 90%. That's our, that's our target. Obviously we want 100% at 100%. But where they draw the bar that we have to get over, that we want to get over is at 90 at 90. 
in the graduation rate. Uh, graduation rate's changing. The, the federal government wants us to report a four-year graduation rate, so the day I start my freshman year, I have four years from that day to graduate. That's what the federal government says. If you don't graduate in those four years, you don't count. Now, I might graduate four years in one day, and in the federal government size, that uh, they don't count. You're still a dropout, if you will. Okay? But the state of Missouri, for the purposes of this report, have a five-year graduation rate. And so, from the day you start your freshman year of high school, you have five years to graduate. Now, I would tell you, if the students are going to graduate from our school district, 99.9% .9 are going to graduate within a five-year time, period of time. Very few students need that five and a half or six years. High, high percentage of them. But I will tell you, there, there are some problems with that because a special ed student, by federal law, has until the age of 21 to graduate. And we do have special ed students that go up until the 21st birthday. So there's a problem with that. Um, but overall, overall, a five-year graduation rate, I, I'm not too upset with them. That, that I think that works for a high, high percentage of our kids. What does this 80% represent? That means 80% of the people are 90%, 90%? No. That means we got 80% of the points. Oh, possible. Yeah, and so and that's a that's a misperception. Uh, obviously because you would think, well, we have 80% of our kids at 90% attendance, now, that we have 80% of the kids. Right now, um, we have about 87% of our student body at 90% attendance. And so we have identified that 5%, that 85 to 90% of those kids who aren't at that 90% attendance rate, and we are targeting them. And our, we have coordinators of attendance and dropout, and they're doing an outstanding job. They're knocking on doors in the morning. Uh, we bought them alarm clocks, clocks. We even, you know, you probably know if you have kids in our school district that we have the automated calling system. Sometimes you'll get those on snow days, or hey, don't forget the PTA lunches tomorrow. Uh, some kids get wake-up calls, and uh, you know everyone's got a cell phone. Every kid's got a cell phone. So. If you're a kid with an attendance problem, you might get a call from the school district about 6 in the morning saying, class begins in an hour, won't you come on? <laughs> so, get those kids to class. So this is MSIP 5. Um, um, and the last page is just an explanation. So, as we talked about being accredited, Kansas, Missouri is not fully accredited. Uh, Hickman Mill School District is provisionally accredited. We, have, we are fully accredited. We've always been fully accredited. This is now the accreditation system that we will live under and work under. And we are digging deep into these numbers and ensuring that every student has a high quality education, receives the very best education, and they're prepared for success after they leave our school. And they're definitely stri striving to improve uh, science and mathematics scores. Yes. That's very important. Yes, I, I will tell you, if you have not heard Common Core, is, it, is that a term that anyone's familiar with? Common Core state standards. Um, under No Child Left Behind, it became very evident that the expectations that the state of Missouri has is much higher than the state of Kansas. What we expect a sophomore student to do in the state of Missouri is much higher than what a, uh, student, a sophomore student in the state of Kansas has to perform. So when you, you could be what we might consider basic in Missouri, you might go to, Kansas, go to Kansas and be advanced. And you might go to Arkansas and be a road stop. You know, or you might go to Louisiana and you, know, you might be the smartest kid in the country. So, what the Common Core has done, all, this, all, all the commissioners of education from around, around the country got together. And then they put together a think tank and they came up with common standards for the entire country. When so, did they do this? About two years ago. Okay. Common, so common Core. If you go home and Google Common Core Standards, they'll come up. And <coughs> the whole country, well, I, I should say this. We have a great school district, great teachers, great administrators. Woo, woo. Oh. <laughs> outstanding students, outstanding parents. And they're very humble teachers. <laughs> Spirited! <laughs> very humble. <laughs> If you ever have any questions or, or anything you'd like to discuss with us, please contact the district office or contact the building principal. We'll be more than happy to sit down and talk to you. Of course, you have a great outline, Mr. Barnes.
direct you in the right, the right way to go. So, one question. What's the last change in our SAT average? What well, our district composite is up your asking? Yes. I were uh, right at 20. And I actually, I just looked at the numbers the other day from this current senior class and we're 20 and a half, 21. So it's gone. So it's moved about a half point. Yeah. yeah. That's good because. What is your goal to reach what? Well, I'm the least likely to be able to get into Lawrence with 21. Oh well, and we have many students. I mean, we have we have many students, you know, in the 30s and upper 20s and all that. But our district composite is is approaching that 20 and a half to 21 mark this year. So. Yes, ma'am. We have two administrative um, the meetings that you guys have at City Hall and whatever. Do we have oh, two of those this year. Let's, that's what I'm yeah. Very good. Yes, two or three. I'm not sure how many of the So go to the district. I can website. talk about those later. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you.